Amen. Now, last week, uh, as we continued in our series in Proverbs, the words to live by, we talked about learning how to keep your cool. Some of you needed that this week. You needed to hear that. And uh, Proverbs 29, 11 says, A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise person quietly holds it back. And so what that means is that we got to learn how to control and manage our anger by controlling our actions and our reactions to our circumstances and situations that we face on a daily basis. Now, today I want to talk about the power of vision. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, it says this, Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. Without vision, the people are unrestrained. And so what does that mean? What is vision? Well, vision is having a clear mental picture of where you want to go and what you want to do. It's, it's having, it's having a picture of your life of, of, uh, it's, it's a mental picture of a future state that is powerful enough to mold your present condition. I mean, you know, we have to have a vision for our life. And, uh, cause without vision, uh, people live an unrestrained life. It's a God inspired Hope and expectation that's planted in the heart of man that directs and guides their life so they're just not living their life aimlessly. You know, have you ever seen an artist paint a picture? And uh, sometimes they'll paint a picture based upon like a scenery. They'll they'll paint, say, like the, you know, the sunset or, you know, a, a massive, uh, you know, tree or something like that. Sometimes they'll paint a picture of a of somebody, they'll, they'll see a picture of somebody and they'll paint that picture and that, that painting will look just like the person they're painting. Have you seen that? That's amazing to me. I can't draw a stick man, much less draw a, a somebody that looks like them, right? But you know, uh, but sometimes an artist does a draw or does it paint a picture from something they see on the outside. It's a vision they have on the inside. And so from the vision they have on the inside, they create this painting, this masterpiece. It's like, wow, that's incredible. And they say, well, first I saw it on the inside, and then I drew it on the canvas, and it became the masterpiece on the outside. And that's the power of vision. It's the mental picture we have of our lives that creates the masterpiece of the life that we're going to live. Are y'all with me out there? And so everyone needs a vision for their lives. We need a vision for our, our parenting. Don't just parent. Have a vision for your parenting, right? We need a vision for our jobs, our careers, our, our business. We need a vision for our health. We need a vision for our finances. We need to know where we want to go. We need to know what we're trying to accomplish here. We need to have a vision for our marriages, right? You know, this reminded me of uh, whenever I worked in the oil field and I was on the rigs, you know, it was a, it was not it was very common for the guys, you know, that some of them worked, you know, 14 and 14, 7 and 7 or whatever. And a lot of the conversations every once in a while, you might have a lady on the rig, but mostly it was a bunch of burly guys, you know, rough, gruff guys. And I would listen to the conversations and I would listen to their conversations about their spiles and about their marriage. And it wasn't good. And I thought, man, you know, I was single at the time. And I thought, man, I'd rather be single than miserable like them. But, you know, as, as I got saved, you know, God began to give me a different vision of marriage. And it's like, wait a minute. I don't have to have that. And I had this vision of having a, a wife that I could play with, that I could have fun with, that I could do projects with, and that was my friend, that we could hold hands, that we could love each other, and we could live our lives, and when we get old, we'll still be in love with each other, and we're not cutting each other down and tearing each other up. Come on, are y'all with me? God gave me a vision. You need to have a vision. You need to have a, a mental picture for your life. Why do we need a vision for our life? Number one, vision releases passion and motivation in life. And that's what Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. You know what perish means? It means to die. Without vision, you die. And it doesn't mean to physically die. It means to emotionally die. It means to spiritually die, to physically die. Without vision, you'll lose all excitement and passion for life. 
Without vision, you lose enthusiasm and motivation. You won't want to get out of bed on Monday morning. Are y'all still hearing me out there, you know? You know, you might have heard me tell this uh, useless analogy before, but when it comes to vision, I can't think of a better one. But, you know, uh, how many of you heard of, they they race greyhound dogs. Have y'all heard of that? You know, just like they race horses on a racetrack, they race greyhound dogs, and they, they put them in gates just like horses. And, and the way they get them around the track is they get a, a mechanical rabbit, and uh, somebody in the press box is controlling the rabbit remote control rabbit, you know? And so as soon as they open the gates, they take off with the, the rabbit takes off down the track and the, and the greyhounds got a vision. They got that rabbit in sight and it looks just like a real rabbit and they can't wait. They have a vision of putting their mouth on that rabbit. But I heard the story of one time this, they were having this greyhound fight and, and the rabbit was running the race and halfway down the track, the rabbit, you know, like technology, it had a, it had a hiccup and it blew up. And all of a sudden, the dogs come to a screeching halt, and they're looking at the pieces of the rabbit. And some of them just laid down, and they were just, you know, their tongues hanging out, and they're like, oh, man, this is hard. And then some of them, they just looked around, they didn't know what to do. They were trying to jump the fence. They're like, I'm out of here, man. I lost my vision, you know. And then some of them just, just sat on the track and began howling at the fans. They, they were upset. It's a picture. It's a picture of people. Some people, like the greyhound, they lose their vision. They have no vision, and they're plopping down on the couch of life. And they're, they're jumping the fences and bruising their ribs, and they're, and they're howling at others without any motivation. And they stop running the race of life, all because they have no vision. They have no mental picture of where they want to go. How many of you know we need a vision? Without vision, people perish. We die mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. But you know, just the opposite is true. If you get a vision for your life, you gain greater excitement and passion, and you get motivated, and, you, and your life is fulfilled. Somebody don't have to crank you up on Monday morning because your vision gets you out of bed on Monday morning. The great, Listen, remember this. The greater your vision of life, the more exciting life can be. And we can see the power of vision in the life of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that Jesus had clear vision of why he was here on the earth. And the Bible says in John 6, 38, Jesus said, I've come down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. He had a vision. He had a clear vision. His vision was to do the will of the Father. His goal was to just do what God wanted him to do. You know, it just amazes me. You ever take time to notice like birds like, you know, we, we got these birds that think our house is their nest and we, we try to, you know, get them to go build nests in trees. But, you know, you just watch those birds and they just like, man, they just doing what God created them to do. They chirping, they laying eggs, they hatching eggs, they having babies and they do it all over again. And they're just doing what God wanted them to. And, and it's, you know, God wants us to have vision like Jesus. Jesus had vision and it brought great fulfillment and excitement in his life. And the Bible says in John 4, 34, remember when Jesus was with the disciples and they were near Galilee and the guys said, hey, Jesus, we need some, we need some Chick-fil-A, man. We need, well, we need some checkers or something. We're going to town and we're going to get something to eat. And Jesus just stayed there. And the woman at the well came, you remember that? And he's ministering to her. And they said, Jesus, you haven't gotten anything to eat. And Jesus said this to him in, in John 4, 34. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Living his vision brought great excitement and fulfillment and purpose in the life of Jesus. So listen, when you have a vision for your life, a mental picture, you will have greater motivation. Let me ask you a question. Why are you here? What's your purpose for he being here? What, what, where's your goal? Where, where are you headed? I encourage you to just ask yourself that question. What, what am I to spend the rest of my days on this earth doing? Jesus had a very productive life because he was driven by vi vision. And the Bible says in John 17, 4, I glorified you on the earth by completing the works which you had given me to do. See, vision increases life's focus. Whenever you have vision, you don't just get up in the, in the morning and just, you know, 
you know, lick your, your finger and find out which way the wind's blowing and, and then head that way. You don't just wake up every morning and just, just with no direction in life. When you have vision, when you have that mental picture on the inside of you, it causes you to order your day. It causes you to order your life. Are y'all with me out there? Jesus faithfully completed his work because he had vision. He had goals. And here's how it work, works. When you have vision, you have focus. When you have focus, you live intentionally. And when you live intentionally, you make a difference. Amen? See, if you're going to be a good parent, you got to have vision and you got to have focus and you got to be intentional. Amen. If you're going to have a good marriage, you got to have vision and you got to have focus and you got to be intentional. Are y'all with me out there? Do you have a vision for your life? You need a vision for every role in your life. You need a vision for where you want to go in your relationships and, and your career and your job and all that kind of stuff. Y'all got that? If you got that, say, I got that. All right. Now, point number two, everybody needs a vision for their lives. But number two, everyone needs an eternal vision for their lives. It's not just good enough to have a vision. You got to have an eternal vision. What, what do we mean by eternal vision? Eternal vision means having a mental picture of what God wants you to do and where God wants you to go. Haven't we all tried out doing our own vision and we come up empty handed? See, if you're going to live a, a, a really robust life, a powerful life, you got to have a God vision. You got to, you got to want to know what God wants you to do, where God wants you to go. And so every Christian needs an eternal vision. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time, and he's planted eternity in every human heart. God planted eternity in every human heart. What does that mean? Eternity in your heart. I believe it's God placed it in the inside of a person a sense of something eternal. Not just, not just the here and now but the eternal, a desire to know the eternal significance of why you're here and what's God's plan for your life. Eternal vision means you, you take time to think about, God, what is your purpose for putting me here on this planet? What is your purpose for allowing me to live right now, right here at this moment in time? How many of you know we are not wind up toys that he put on the earth? He's got a purpose for every one of us. Amen. I got a plan for you, says the Lord. Eternal vision means a few things, but I believe eternal vision means following God's will for your life. God has placed in the heart of everybody his will. And so... um to do what he created us to do. And so we got to figure that out. We got to figure out where God wants us to go. Acts twenty two fourteen 14 says, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will. How many of you know you can know God's will? It, it's, it doesn't have to be a mystery. Say, I don't know what God, I don't know what God's will for me is, Todd. I would say, start reading the Bible. Because, you know, we want to hear God say, you know, quit your job and go across the country. And we're looking for this far out or this incredible aha moment for God to speak to us. But I tell you I, how God orders his will in our life, line upon line, precept upon precept. One, one step here, one step there. Amen. And so I encourage you, get in the Bible and let God speak to you through his word. And he's going to give you one step at a time. Amen. And he'll help you find out his will. Spiritual power is released in your life whenever you do the will of God, whenever you know and follow the will of God. Can, can I get a witness on that this morning? How many of you were lost, but now you're found, you're saved, and since you gave your life to Christ, you have greater enthusiasm and excitement and power in your life than you ever did before. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. Listen, if you haven't experienced that, you need to get back to square one and say, God, what's your will for my life? Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. God has a plan. He has a vision for our lives. And the more we walk in that vision, the more we can experience abundant life. So that's why, listen, Church is not about just showing up here. If you just come to church like, you know, like, like I'm paying a visit, 
you're not going to get anything about out of Christianity. Because listen, Christianity is not going to church. Christianity is submitting to the will of God. You see, that's why some people, they come to church, but they have no experience in their life. They have no transformation in their life. And the reason is, it's like they're going to tip God. They're going to like put in their punch clock on God. God don't need our punch cord and he don't need no tips. Amen. Come on. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. If you want to tap into abundant life, if you want spiritual power flowing in your life, you can't just show up to church. You got to surrender your will to God and let God's power come on you. And then you're going to start experiencing abundant life. Amen. Come on. You got to know the will of God, but you got to have a vision. You got to have a picture. As for me in my house, I'm not doing my own thing. I'm not living the ways of the world. As for me in my life, I'm going to serve the Lord. I got a vision. Come on. How many of you got a vision to do the will of God? Listen, if you don't, you need a vision to do the will of God. Amen. That's why we do the, the growth track, the next steps class. That's why we do it, to help people figure that out. Step one, know God. Step two, live free. Step three, find your purpose. Step four, make a difference. When you do the will of God, you're going to make a difference and your life is going to be blessed. Number two, eternal, uh, living for eternal vision means being willing to serve others. How many of you know life is not about ourselves? I tell you, the most miserable people on the earth are selfish people. I'll say, I, will, I think I will. The most selfish people on the planet are selfish people, are self-centered people. And listen, it's in all of our DNA to be selfish and selfish. We ain't even got to work at it. We just, we, it just comes natural. Give me that. That's mine. I want that. I want that. Come on. How many of you know that? But listen, if you, you got to get a vision to serve others. Come on. I'm preaching better than you saying amen right there. Mark 10 45 says, even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve others and give his life a ransom for any. Jesus had eternal vision. You know what his vision was? I'm going to serve others. He didn't come here to, to see what kind of palace he could have. He was the king of kings, but he wasn't looking for no palace, no, no castle. He was, he came to serve others. And if we're going to be like our master and our savior, guess what we need? We need a vision to serve others. Amen. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 23, 11, the greatest among you will not be the one that, that has everybody serving them. The greatest among you will be the servant of all. Amen. Listen, you'll never live a fulfilling life until you embrace the vision of being a servant and serve others. Are y'all with me out there? I'm trying to, I'm trying to paint a, a picture on the, the canvas of our spirit today. An eternal vision. You got to serve others. So three things happen when you choose to live your life as a servant. Number one, your life is fulfilled. Number two, others get blessed. And number three, God gets glorified. That's what it's all about, right? To just glorify God. Some say, no, it ain't. I want to be glorified. Well, you need a vision to be servant of others. That's why we're having a serve day in a few weeks on July 21st. And man, we got all kinds of things. Miss Dixie's been working hard and, uh, we're, we're all kind of outreaches. We're, we're going to the Salvation Army, St. Joseph's Diner, the Faith House. We're going to visit, uh, folks at the nursing homes and, and, um, the Children's Hospital has opened up where we can come love on some babies. We're going to feed the elderly and the homeless. We're going to have some block parties and just love up on people and Willow Street and Katie Zim and, and Macon. We're going to invite folks to come and get free school supplies the next Sunday. We're going to give blood. We're going to paint. We're going to clean. We're going to do anything we can to just help and serve others. Why? Why? Well, so that our lives can be fulfilled. Because when you serve others, your life will be blessed. And so listen, we, we spend a lot of money on entertainment. We let, we spend a lot of money on things. And, and after we spend it or after we have the experience, we wake up and we're still empty. But listen, whenever you learn to serve others, you get a fulfillment that never ends. That stays there forever. Amen. Come on, y'all with me out there. I see Miss Jeannie back there. Miss Jeannie comes out here. And, and nobody ever notices, but she's out here pulling weeds and doing flower, planting flowers and all that. She just wants the house of the Lord to look beautiful. 
Nobody goes patting on the back. Nobody, you know, has a party for or anything. But how many of you know Miss Jeannie is living a fulfilled life? Why? Because her heart is just to serve others. Amen. God bless you, Miss Jeannie. So, so I encourage you, listen. We can't do a serve day without a church that are servants, right? So I encourage you. We have a sign up from the website, in the foyer, on the church app. I encourage you to join us that weekend and serve in some way. And, and who knows whose lives are going to be changed for the kingdom and for the glory of God. Amen. You know, when Jesus wants to reach somebody, you know what he does? He just puts a light in their path. And you know what we're called? We're called the light of the we are the light of the world. Amen. So, so I encourage you to sign up and join us on serve day, which is July 21st, right? So finally, eternal vision also means making a priority of connecting with others. And this is what Proverbs 1130 says. Godly men are growing a tree that bears life giving fruit and all who win souls are wise. Having eternal vision means to have a, a heart for souls. And what that means to have a heart for souls is recognizing that everybody that you look at here in this place, you look at them in the natural, but they have a body. You're looking at their body, but within that body, they have a soul. And, and within that soul, they have a spirit. And when everybody dies, their spirit goes somewhere. And what we need, need to be more worried about is not so much their physical and not as much their soul as, as or, you know, their, their mind, their will and the emotion as their eternal state right? Are y'all with me out there? Because everybody goes someplace when they die, right? And so we need to have a vision for eternal life, for winning souls. And so it's through the life-giving fruit of our lives that lost souls are reached for Christ. Listen, you know, very few people become a Christian because of some tremendous preaching from the pulpit. And even if they do, it's, it's always because it's connected to a relationship. The reason why they come to church, the reason why they hear the gospel is somebody befriended them and leveraged their influence in that person's life. And so they come to church and give their life to Christ. Are y'all with me? And so it's all about relationships. It's our compassion, our kindness, our patience, our humility, our unconditional love that reaches others for Jesus, right? It's not complicated. Soul winning begins with relationships. Discipleship begins with relationships. You know, people want to go into the ministry sometimes, and the only thing they ever want to do is stand behind the sacred desk and tell everybody how much they know. And how much they learn. But, but listen, preaching is a tiny part of ministry. Come on, y'all not saying amen good enough right there, right? People say, man, I want a ministry. I'm telling you, ministry is about connecting with others and building relationships. Amen. You know, the old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen. If you agree with that, say amen. And so Proverbs 18, 24 says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. People who live with eternal vision, they make a priority of building relationships and connecting with others. Why? Because they want to reach him for Jesus, right? The disciple Matthew, he had that eternal vision. They have a vision. When you live your life with eternal vision, Every relationship is important. No relationship is, is mundane. No relationship has little value. Every person in every relationship has significance. Amen. And that's what Matthew, Matthew lived with that vision. In fact, in Matthew 9, whenever, after he became a disciple, the Bible says in Matthew 9, 9, Jesus went out from there and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. And by the way, a tax collector was a notorious robber or stealer and, and take extra taxes from people. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. And while Jesus was having dinner, where at? At Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. So when Matthew became a Christian, what he did was he opened his house and he invited other tax collectors and he invited other people, other 
notorious sinners, some of the Bible says. And that's not like people that are really, really bad. That means like you and I, we're all notorious sinners when Christ saves us, right? And so he invites all these people at his house and he invites Jesus. And so Matthew introduced his friends to Jesus. He had an eternal vision of connecting with others through relationships. So, you know, sometimes we think for God to use us, we got to know chapter, we got to know verse, we got to have a, we got to have a, the, uh, you know, a theological degree or, you know, doctrinal. No, you don't need all that. All you need to do is connect with others. All you need to do is be relational. How many of you can be relational? You know, listen, you can reach others. All you got to do is smile. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Tanya and I were, uh, it, it just, it just blessed me because it's like, okay, maybe there is a little light, you know. But Tony and I went to a restaurant one day and we saw this lady and we couldn't, and she smiled real big and she came, she gave us a hug, you know. And so we, we really didn't know who she was. And then, and then we started connecting the dots and she, she works at the gym down there at Planet Fitness. And every time we go in there, we just try to be real nice. And we saw her in a public place and she, she hugged Tanya like we've been old friends, you know. But it's like, wow, the power of relationship, the power of being nice, of being compassionate, of just being others focused and not self focused. We can make a difference, folks. Are y'all with me out there? So listen, so can I, can I just go on a rant right here? Can I chase my rabbit down the track for just a moment? Come on, you can turn it off as soon as you want, right? Listen, don't go to the restaurant and be demanding and pound your fist on the table and say, that pizza was cold. Come on, that's a soul that's waiting right there, right? Amen. Are y'all with me? So don't go to the restaurant and wear family life shirt and say, come on, no, take your shirt off. Hide that, all right? Come on. <laughs> all right, that's I chased my rabbit there. I'm done, all right? Matt, verse 11, listen, verse 11. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Come on, enough said right there, amen? Matthew had an eternal vision of connecting with others so he could, he could move forward the kingdom of God, amen? So, you know, consider this opportunity. Who can you reach out to? Who, who can you be a friend to at your workplace, in your neighborhood, even here at church? Who can you reach out to? Uh, you know, I mentioned this last Sunday, but I want to mention it again. In, in two Sundays is July 4th. It's July 4th. Or no, July. It's not 4th. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, yeah, I knew that. It's Wednesday. I'm getting the vision now. I'm getting the vision, all right? But in two Wednesdays is July 4th. Most people have, a lot of people have the day off. Not everybody. Some people have the day off, which is a day, a holiday, right? And, and a lot of people just want to do something for a holiday. And for the fourth, you know, it's not uncommon for people to just uh, fire up the barbecue pit and, and, and do some burgers and hot dogs. What if we had, you know, churches that Wednesday? We thought, what if we just cancel church and everybody have a Matthew party at your house and just invite somebody? Not, not everybody that you know, you know, have a purpose, have a vision, have a, you know, Invite some friends. Invite somebody you're trying to reach out to. Invite somebody you're trying to encourage. What about if we did that? What do y'all think of that? Three amens. All right. All right. Well, me and all three, y'all, we're going to have us a Matthew party. Amen. But I, my point is, is just having eternal vision is just having others focused and connecting with other people. Amen. And finally... Everyone needs an enlarged vision. Most of us, our vision is way too small. And so uh, what kind of vision do you have for your life? You know, some people just have a small vision. Some people have a large vision. Some people have a vision 
of being successful and making a difference. Some people have a vision of failure and say, Todd, all that stuff you're talking about, I mean, that sounds great and I believe it. But me, I mean, you know, I'm kind of like David. I, I was the, you know, I, I was the last in the clan and Gideon, you know, I'm, I'm not from the right family and, and we have a hundred and excuses of why we can't have a great vision. I mean, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but you know, for marriage, but you know, I don't know. We've been married for a while and you know, I don't know if things can change. You need a vision. You need to enlarge your vision. Amen. Come on. You need, some of us have a, a, a bright vision, a, a future that's bright. Some of us have a future that's little. Come on. Sometimes life wants to belittle your vision, wants to shrink your vision. Wants to tell you that you can't expect anything good or great or grand in life. Come on. The enemy wants to smash your vision. But I want to tell you, you need to enlarge your vision. The Lord wants you to enlarge your vision for life. Come on, he's got great things in store for you. Come on, he's got blessings for you. I know you might have had a bad week, a bad month, a bad life, but come on, it's not over till it's over. Amen. And Jesus is the master of turning lives around, turning situations around. And so I want to paint a picture in your spirit this morning that it's not over. Why don't you let God with the brushstroke of his spirit begin to paint a new vision on your life. Amen. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more, more than all we could ask or imagine according to his power that works within us. Amen. Come on. We, come on. You know, he told, he told one man of God, he said, strengthen. He said, enlarge your tent pegs. Get a bigger building because I got a greater blessing. I got a greater favor for you. Come on. The Lord wants you to know that you, why you're still breathing a breath of life. He hasn't expended and he hasn't got to the end of his purpose and his vision for your life. But you got to let it be enlarged today. Come on, you got to take the brushstroke of your faith and begin to expand that vision that God has for you. Can I get can I get anybody in here to believe what I'm saying to you today? I know I'm coming against. I'm coming against experiences. I'm coming against what people said. I'm coming against what you've experienced in the past. But I'm telling you, God can do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you could even ask or you could even imagine the vision that you have for yourself. God will blow that vision out of the water. Amen. Woo, glory to God. Well, I don't know if you're getting anything out of this, but why I am proclaiming it. I'm, I'm getting bigger on the inside. Amen. Amen. So listen, how does God enlarge your vision? One, enlarge vision comes from having spiritual eyes. If you look at everything in the natural, your vision will be small. The Holy Spirit allows you to see farther and more than your natural eyes can see. Enlarge vision comes from spiritual eyes. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, however it is written, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us. How? By his spirit. By his spirit. The Holy Spirit makes the unseen visible and the unknown possible. And that's why we need to constantly be seeking the Lord. Remember Abraham, when he was in the presence of God, God said, come here, get out of that tent, Abraham. Look up there in the sky. How many stars they got? Oh, Lord, let me see. One, two, three. I can't count them, Lord. Exactly. You can't count them. That's how your descendants are going to be. What? Are you crazy, Lord? I'm old and I don't even have... How in the world is that going to happen? The Lord was giving him a vision. Amen. He was helping him by the eyes of faith to see what he couldn't see in the natural. Amen. Come on. You got to see through the eyes of, of the spirit and not natural eyes. Amen. Helen Keller was asked, you know, what could be worse than being born blind? She said, having sight and having no vision. That's worse, right? We got to have vision. And Lord's vision comes from growing in your faith. As natural sight or vision is a function of the eyes, spiritual sight or vision is a function of your faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says this, faith is the substance of things Hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith sees stuff that 
Other people, you say it and they go, what? You're crazy. Yes. Because they're looking at it in the natural. You're looking at it in the spiritual. See, your faith allows you to see the future before it comes into being. Amen. And so listen, you could just sit down and just cross your legs and cross your arms and then get a big old boudet lip till it hits the ground and live your life there. But I encourage you, uncross your legs, uncross your arms, pick up your lip, stand up and begin to believe God for great things in your life. Amen. Matthew 9, 29 says, according to your faith, it will be done to you. Faith enlarges your vision by allowing you to believe for more and greater things in life. Amen. Come on, pardon me while I just encourage myself in the Lord today. Come on. Come on, faith allows you to receive more than you could ever receive in the natural. Faith allows your vision to grow. Come on, how many of you see it right now? Doubt kills vision. Doubt shrinks vision. Faith enlarges vision. Doubt will always shrink your vision for your life. It'll kill the vision for your life. But faith will always grow the vision you have for your life. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen? Y'all believe that this morning? Come on, just stand with me this morning as we close. You know, some people, it's natural in their, in their, whenever they just sit and think, it's natural for them to be negative. It's natural for them to doubt. It's natural. It's nat Whenever you've had bad experiences in life, it sends a message. And some of us, We've heard so many negative messages that all we, I mean, you know, I mean, we can, somebody can just come and bless us with a million dollars and we'll find a negative thing about it. You, you know what I'm saying? It's just like sometimes life has a way of just forging you into that mold. But how about we ask God this morning to just enlarge our vision? Everybody needs personal vision. Come on, everybody needs eternal vision. And everybody needs an enlarged vision. How many of you open to that this morning? How does it happen? It happens by the Spirit. Come on, the Spirit of God. Come on, John, the revelator in the book of Revelations, the Bible says he was in the Spirit in the Lord's day and the Lord showed him and he had this vision and he started seeing what the world was going to, what's going to happen in the end times and, and the condition of different churches. He started seeing things and all of a sudden, man, wow, we're still, look, we're still looking at John's vision and John's revelation. But what about God? God given us the revelation, us renewed vision. Just close your eyes right where you are. Let's just ask the Lord, Lord, paint a new picture on the canvas of our heart. Just close your eyes, focus for just a moment. Let God use your thoughts. Let God use your mind. Come on, maybe you just need to repent. Say, Lord, forgive me for being so negative and being so doubtful. Forgive me, Lord, for just settling for where I am in life. Lord, today I'm choosing, I'm deciding, Lord, that I don't want to live a life of mediocrity, a life of littleness. Lord, I have a vision for my marriage. I have a vision for my parenting. I have a vision for my job and my career and my business. Come on, I have a vision, Lord, for my life that it's going to be good and I'm going to be blessed and it's going to be favorable, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would release your grace right now over this place. Come on, let's ask the Lord to give us an eternal vision. An eternal vision. Lord, give us an eternal vision, Father God. Lord, help us, Father. Help us today, Lord, to have that vision, Lord. The vision of the kingdom of God. The vision, Lord, of winning souls. The vision of serving others. Help us to get our eyes and our focus off of ourselves, Lord, and begin to look out towards others and make a difference in in other people's lives so that we can have a kingdom presence, a kingdom and Lord advancement. Thank you, Father God, for just helping us today. Father, we love you. We honor you. Come on. I, I hear the voice of the Lord saying to a lady in here, come on, you've been hopeless. You felt helpless and you didn't think that it could turn around. And God is saying to you, you have not you have not seen what I can do. I know it's been a rough patch. I know it's been a bad past, but I'm telling you, I have the stores for you. I have a bright
bright future for you. And I just see the Lord taking you out of the dark, deep wilderness and taking you out and putting you in the city of lights where there's lights everywhere and there's color everywhere and it's beaming and it's teeming with life. And the Lord's saying, I want to take you out of the rut and out of the place that you've been living in and I want to give you a, a just a new vision, a new painting on the canvas of your spirit and of your mind. Come on, if you receive that this morning, just say, Lord, I hear you. I'm receiving it as my own, as the word for me today. Thank you, Father God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Now listen, enlarged vision comes by knowing God personally. Remember when Nicodemus, the religious leader, came to Jesus by night. And he said, I perceive that you, by all these miraculous signs that you do, that God is with you and that you are of the kingdom. And Jesus, realizing why he was asking the question, says, I tell you the truth, Nicodemus, no one can see the kingdom of God until they're born again born of the Spirit. Maybe you're here today and you've maybe been to church several times, but you've never surrendered, never given your life to Christ. I want to pray for you this morning. Pray for God to, to just forgive you of every sin you've ever committed. All of us have had to do that. None of us are without fault. But today, Jesus wants you to get a vision of being sitting at the table, at His table, sitting in the seat at His table, His banquet table. He wants you to get a vision of, of being His child and He wants to forgive you and cleanse you. If you're here today and you've never, never surrendered your life to Jesus fully, 100%, and asked Him to forgive your sins, I want to pray for you today. Just raise your hand right now and say, Todd, pray a prayer for me. I want to do that today. I want to surrender my life. Just raise your hand so I can see it and I want to pray for you. See your hand right over here. And anywhere else, just raise your hand. Let's pray this prayer together. I see. Come on, let's pray and let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord. Father, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross, for shedding your blood so my sins could be forgiven. Lord, I have a vision that you forgive me, that you died for me, and that you want to cleanse me and that you want to give me hope, and that you want to give me a bright future. Lord Jesus, I want to live for you, and I want to serve you. Thank you, Jesus, for cleansing me, and for washing me, and giving me a new life. Thank you, Jesus, for opening my spiritual eyes. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen, amen. Praise. It's the greatest, greatest decision you could ever make. Those of you that prayed that prayer, there's a card in the pew that says, I made a decision. If you'll take time to just a few seconds to fill it out, bring it to the lobby. We're not going to harass you or anything. We just want to give you a Bible, give you some gifts for just to help you get started. It's the best decision you could ever make. Y'all agree with that? All right, let me pray a blessing on you as we go out. Come on, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I want to I wanna use my tongue right now to just bless you and, and ask God's favor upon you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy comes to rob, but I break the power of darkness over every person in this room and I pray the favor and blessing of the Lord on every person, every individual and family that's here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.